Yo, Elliot, I've heard you say that men in their 20s should bust their nut once a week. Why is this? I think I'd like to retain for as much longer than one week. Thank you. I'm loving this program. So first of all, I have my conviction about it that comes from what I've studied, right? Again, this is I'm not an expert in this, but I've often referred to this great little book called Listen to Your Body, and it's based on traditional Chinese medicine, and I, I do think that there's some value. I think there's a tremendous value to uh, Chinese medicine and natural health, right? Essentially, it's natural health, how to be healthy naturally without, you know, uh, big pharma. And so there are ways to live that that improve longevity and, and vitality and make you feel good, right? And make you, make you the best you. And so according to traditional Chinese medicine, in this nice little cute little book, uh, he goes on and says that there are clear guidelines in traditional Chinese medicine about ejaculation of sperm. So the, the premise is that the more you blow your load, the more you're, you're losing your vitality, right? And I think we've all sort of experienced that, right? I know I've had, right? It, it took me until my 40s. I didn't realize it when I was younger. A lot of you guys recognize it more for whatever reason. But not until my 40s, I started to recognize that, boy, the day after I blow my load, and for like you know, a day or two, I'm a little off. And then I also discovered it takes me about 10 days, personally, at this point, for me to feel that vigor, that fire that I had before blowing my load. And now it makes, it makes sense to me now, after reading this pseudoscientific, right? I don't think there's anything wrong with pseudoscience, right? In fact, like the whole vaccine thing is pseudoscience. It's like, it's not exactly science, but they're, they're pointing at something there. So anyway, it says, uh, clear guidelines about ejaculation of sperm. In general, not more than twice a month is advised because of loss of vitality. Other considerations include the men's health and his age. The ancient texts give the following advice for a man of 20 years old. Once in every four days. I'm just going based on that. Right? At 30, once every eight days. At 40, once every 16 days. At 50, once every 20 days. And at 60, once a month. So... I come to the conclusion, now this validates what was my conclusion or they kind of work together. I don't know if I had this thought and then read it in the book or read the book and it helped me have the thought, but I've sort of, sort of brought this together in my own mind that, or based on my experience as well, this is, I think this is a pretty solid guideline. It doesn't mean that it's written in stone. But one of the things that I've discovered just through my own experience, but watching you guys and watching videos and noticing this whole no fat semen retention uh, movement, there are a few things that could be pathological about it. And one of them is that it become, starts to become a god. It starts to become an obsession, what I mean by that, right? In the same way that masturbation becomes an obsession, right? Because you're engaging in that ritual and you're worshiping porn every day when you do this. There is a sense of pride. I started to notice it when I was fasting, right? I fasted before doing semen retention. I fasted, you know, started fasting back in 2018. I only started doing semen retention this year. And so I'm careful with myself because I saw what happened to me with fasting. I started to get proud. I started to personally identify with my streaks. <laughs> you catch where I'm going with this? I started to make it a bigger deal than what it was. And the, mo the, the monks, the, the, uh, the, mo the monastery, the guys in the monasteries, right? I think I remember reading this from Brianna Shav also. He talks about how not to be too austere with yourself for fear of pride. He says that Satan loves it when you're really tough on yourself because then you start to become, you know, hmm. Well, I did no fat for 20 days. Well, I did 30 days. I did 50 days. Oh, right? So then it starts to become a religion. It starts to become an obsession. It starts to become an idol. That's really what it, what it ends up becoming, right? Or I fasted. Wow, this guy fasted for 10 days. Well, he fasted for 20 days. Boy, I only fasted for five days. I got to live up to these guys. It starts to become an ego issue. And I don't... And, I wouldn't have been able to warn against this as it relates to semen retention had I not messed up during my first season of fasting. Now I don't take myself too seriously with any of this stuff. In other words, 
I don't make it an idol. I don't have, I'm not personally identified with it. I don't get my sense of value and self-worth from it. So that's just, that's one warning, right? That's more of a, that's more of a spiritual warning. It's a warning against pride. That's all it is, right? Start to feel like, well, look what I did. And even that, just, just, just the whole idea that I'm going to fast is sort of an idol. It's sort of a egotistical way of looking at it when the saints and the divines and the mystics, right? I love the Orthodox tradition. They even call some of their guys mystics. Um, they, they, they recognize that it is a, it's, a, it's a spiritual battle that you're, that you're gearing up for. It's not a matter of challenging your, yourself, Right, it's it's and and when it's a spiritual battle, it's beyond your will, and so I can will myself to get something done, and then I can be proud about it because look at me, or if it's a spiritual fast, it's a spiritual um, retention or abstinence. Right, it's God is helping me, God has given me grace to do this. This is a humble way of looking at life that saves us from pride, but also saves us from depression. Because if you start to think that it's up to me to get things done and they don't get done, you're going to feel bad about yourself. So both, either way, if, we, if, our, if our will wins or loses, we lose. If your will wins, you, you lose because you become proud. If your will loses, you lose because... You take that personally as well. It's like the opposite of pride, but it's on the same spectrum. I don't even know what to call it, right? But like depression, right? Depression is, is on the same spectrum of pride. I don't know if that's the right word, but feeling sorry and sad about yourself is just as, it's on the, it's a, it's a other side of the same coin of feeling proud and good about yourself because they're both wrapped up in what I can do what I didn't do, as opposed to resting in the Lord and saying and asking God to give me the grace. I think that perspective is good for us, right? Again, once again, I, I don't know. I know that there's spiritual wisdom in the literature and the Bible and stuff like this, right? I know that there are good ideas that were propounded by ascetics and such. And then, the, 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 and then there are commandments, things to do and not to do. But in my life, I've looked at those things and I recognize them as maybe external. Like, okay, I get that. I see that. I understand that. But it's not until, and maybe we've got to all make our own mistakes, it's not until I've seen it in myself and others that I'm like, oh, this is practical advice. It's not just religious weird stuff. Right. So, you know, people are like, oh, that's all archaic religious thinking. Well, it's actually very practical. Right. So it's very practical to lean on God, lean on the creator, lean on the father, lean on nature, whatever you want to call it. Even though nature is a fruit of God, I want to be in, walking with the creator rather than offering it up or recognizing that I am not 100 percent sovereign over my life, but the grace and mercy of God precedes me then you can't get depressed you can't get depressed you can't get depressed because your life is in the hands of the lord and if he sees it fit for you to have this failure then it's up to you to be grateful for it and see the lining in the cloud the silver lining of the cloud right every 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 bad thing that happens to us is because god is allowing it to happen to us because we're supposed to make something of it. But if you think that you're in charge and something bad happens, you start going, okay, what did I do? How do I fix this? Why, why, why oh me? I screwed up, I'm such a bad person. And the same thing on the other side, right? It's the same coin, same coin. Oh, look what I did, proud of me. Look at this, I did it and you didn't, <laughs> right? It's the same shit, same shit. You gotta stop, you gotta stop. And so, as just a warning against that, right? I'm not saying that's going to happen to you, but just as a warning, I advise not to push 
ourselves that hard. I know that doesn't, I know that sounds like a contradiction from, you know, pro masculine Elliot that's telling everybody to do hard stuff, but ha having austerity, having discipline, being committed to something is very different than being attached to something, making something an idol and, and, and being personally identified with it. Very different things. Try your best in everything that you do, but leave room for God. That's all it is. So here we go. I have the ideas proposed by natural medicine, which I would even go as far as to say that there may be evidence somewhere that's, that, that, that supports this idea that retaining too long can be bad for you. Right? I'm thinking about it from the psychological and spiritual perspective, but physiologically, I think people have said this, and I, but I don't know, and I can't, I'm not going to put my stamp on that. I haven't even read that, but there are people who will like, comment on my videos, or some of you guys will say, like, yeah, you, wanna, you don't want to retain too long because it's even bad for your physiology. That may or may not be the case. I don't know, but I would consider that as well. Now, just coming full circle, right? I'm just talking about a lot of different things here. That's what I tend to do. You say, um, you know, according to this, it's once every four days. You say that I said once a week. I don't remember saying that. But if you want to go longer than a week, then go for longer than a week. It's just a guideline. It's just a guideline, right? It's not written in stone. This ain't written in stone. Nothing I say is written in stone. Very little is written in stone, <laughs> right? Except the Ten Commandments. It's the only thing written in stone, right? Very little is written in stone. And very much is sort of a guideline, right? A guideline, the middle path, right? You don't want to be an extremist in either way. And I know the, I get the appeal of being an extremist because I like to do extreme stuff too. But that's because I got to check my pride. I'm a very prideful guy. I become very proud of myself with my asceticism. The monks, they, and, and, and Bryanashav, who, who he was a, you know, the head of a monastery, says be very, very, very careful be very careful. He warns about a lot of different things, Eat like too much fasting, too much praying, right? Could you believe it? Too much praying. I think it was really actually um, solitary confinement in terms of prayer. Like, you know, people go away and they want to get away from everybody for prayer, right? Pray and meditate. And he says, go, you know, go, but don't go too long because if you go too long, you are vulnerable to demonic attack. And it usually comes in the form of pride. Right? That's where most of the demonic attack comes from, pride. Look at me. Look at me. I fasted for 40 days out in the, you know, up in the mountain. Right? And you want to go tell everybody about it. And then you want to write a book about it. Like me. I did that. <laughs> Constantly having to check my pride, my own pride. So anyway, that's it. If you, if you want to go longer than a week, go longer than a week. Challenge yourself for fun. Just don't take yourself too personally. Challenge yourself for fun. S challenge yourself as a scientific experiment. That's really, that's essentially what I'm doing, right? I'm doing it more of a scientific experiment. Like, what is this about and what, what, can, I, what can I learn from it? Not a matter of, this is what I must do so that I can feel good about my, be proud of myself, right? And trust me, I get caught up in it too. I get caught up in it. I do. And so I'm just telling you what I tell myself. Hey, don't make this an idol. I, I caught myself doing that the other day, right? Because it was supposed to be No Nut November, and I nutted. <laughs> I nutted in November. <laughs> I did. I got about 14 days in, a record for me. But then I, I started, like, judging myself, beating myself up, and I'm like, wait a second. I'm making this bigger deal than it really is. You don't. You don't want to be a slap dick, meaning you don't want to be somebody who doesn't challenge himself and doesn't produce austerity in his life at all. You don't want to be that, that kind of guy, super lazy and effeminate. You always want to be challenging yourself, but it has to be rightly ordered challenge. It has to be done with the right spirit in mind. And if we think of ourselves as Lord and Savior over our own lives, we start to take our own actions too seriously and we make them idols. And so I don't want you guys to make semen retention or fasting or working out. I've made working out an idol. I don't want you guys to turn any of these things into an idol because it's a, it's a slippery slope. I've been down there. And so, like I said, sometimes you gotta learn on your own, so maybe you need to do it yourself, but at least you will remember old Uncle E telling you, 
hey, be careful. All right, dude? Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.